Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Junk Food and You. Today, I am going to answer the question that I get asked all the time when people find out that I review candy, and that is, what's your favorite candy? Um, I'm also going to follow up with a story that talks about the greatest chocolate experience that I've ever had. The reason that I'm going to put these two together is because generally people find that the answer to what your favorite candy is, is actually kind of a boring uh, answer. Um, so I often follow up with the greatest chocolate experience I've ever had. So uh, why don't we get into that? But before we do, uh, as always on Junk Food and You, when I'm doing these solo shows, I, uh, I go with a special little treat. I thought today, since I'm talking about my favorite chocolate experience, I would go with one of my favorite chocolates, uh, the Ferrero Rocher. Uh, this is sort of a Christmas tradition normally, but uh, for most people, but I kind of like them all the time. I'm a big fan of Ferrero Rochers. Uh, I think they're sort of like one of the classier um, everyday candies that you find nowadays. So I learned something interesting about Ferrero Rochers actually recently. So this is the average Ferrero Rocher, you bite into it. So what I learned recently, there's a little chocolate that's inside the Ferrero Rocher, Nutella. It's made by the same company. It kind of makes sense. So it turns out Ferrero Rochers are filled with Nutella. So there, you get like a snack fact along with your uh, episode of uh, Junk Food and You. So while I'm talking about this episode of Junk Food and You, I got an update Candy Critic today. We got a new review going out. So I figured I can do that. Because again, I like to do secondary things while I'm talking to you guys for these episodes because it just seems awkward to stare in the camera and tell you these stories. So, start on my uh, updating. And we'll start off with the basic question that everybody asks. And that is, what is your favorite candy? It's actually um, kind of a, a, a simple answer. Well, there's two, there's two answers to it. And I tell people, this, this, is how, this is how I say it. I'll say that how, if you were to come up to me and ask me, what's your favorite candy? I'd say, there's two answers to that question. Uh, part one, if you go to the website, if you go to candycritic.org and you look up the highest rated candy, you will discover that it is in fact a Kit Kat from England. That is the only candy in Candy Critic to ever re receive a perfect score. Uh, I like Kit Kats. I think they're great. I think they're, uh, I think considering, you know, they were revolutionary when they came out. Uh, the British one uses uh, higher quality chocolate, I find, than other parts of the world. Uh, there's some that are pretty close. But uh, the British Kit Kat bar, I, I could eat one of those things every day of the week. I think they're fantastic, and I definitely think they're the best candy, uh, sort of the highest ranking candy, but not necessarily my favorite candy. And the reason why, the, my favorite candy, that, that answer is actually kind of a little more abstract. Uh, my favorite candy is something new. And for all you candy makers out there that want to send me candy samples, there's sort of two ways you're, you're going to go about, you know, making me happy. And that is you're either going to make a classic treat and you're going to make it really, really well, like better than anyone else, which is very difficult. Or you're going to make something new, something I've never tried before, something I've never thought of before. Also kind of hard, but that is, I find that's, that's the thing I really want. If you can do both, if you can make something new that is really good at the same time, you're going to, you know, you're going to do amazing. I mean, the Kit Kat bar is actually kind of an example of that. For its time, it was something brand new. And it is a fantastic bar. It's got amazing balance, high quality chocolate. It's really good. So I guess if you, you know, you, you, those, are my, th those are my answers. And that's often why people are disappointed with that answer. When they say, you know, what is your favorite candy? And I say, well, the highest ranking candy on, on Candy Critic is a Kit Kat bar. But my favorite candy is something new, something original, something I've never tried before. Um, it doesn't come around very often. Uh, sometimes I'm even happier uh, on Candy Critic if I get a uh, candy that I don't like, but it's new and different. Like I'm more disappointed if I have to eat another Snickers bar or uh, you know another Kit Kat bar. I mean, I like Kit Kat bars and everything. But if I have to eat another one, it's just like, oh, I'm done with this. I don't want any more, you know, sort of uh, just Kit Kat bars. I want something, I want something new, something original, something different. And Particularly in chocolate bars, I find that that's fairly rare. You don't really find many chocolate bars, but even in candy in general, I mean, you know, you can make gummy candies that are kind of neat, 
but are they really different than other gummies other than maybe the shape and sometimes the flavor? Often the flavors are all the same. Uh, bubble gum is the same thing. I mean, how can you change bubble gum to make it different and unique? I mean, texture is a big part of bubble gum, so you know, why can't you, you do, can you do something different texture-wise? Chips. Um, I mean, wacky flavors have been done like crazy. Occasionally there's a wacky flavor that kind of interests me, but I'm actually kind of getting sick of crazy flavors of potato chips. So something new, something creative, that's what I always sort of crave. So again, that's kind of a, I don't know, some people are disappointed with that answer when I tell them that. So the other thing I often, I often segue into, do you want to hear about the coolest chocolate experience I've ever had in my entire life? So the coolest experience I ever had with chocolate, with chocolate, like the greatest chocolate experience. And technically it's something you could do at home, but I think you might have a hard time. You probably come close to it and, and you know, coming close to it is still pretty darn good. So I was at a, a candy convention in Chicago. Um, I haven't been to one in a while, but it used to be that Chicago had this huge candy convention. It was the largest in North America and there's all kinds of candy there. It took up uh, the McCormick Arena which is this huge place. It's one of the biggest uh, convention centers and it's massive. And um, it, it, so there's candy dealers from all over the world there. Uh, some trying to import candies in, some of them trying to, uh, you know, that are already there that have new products. It's a massive show. You can't just go to the show. This isn't like sort of an auto show or something where you can just walk into. The thing about the uh, candy convention is you have to be invited. Uh, and I was invited as a member of the press and it was great. I had a really good time. I got to try all kinds of cool stuff. Um, you know, some people knew who I was, so it was kind of fun to meet some of the, the candy creators that I've talked to online and in person. And I walked away with like 150 pounds of samples, bags and bags of free candy. It was pretty cool. Um, and you know, I had a pretty good time in Chicago. I kind of liked Chicago as a city. So I went to this candy convention. And, uh, you know, again, I had a good time and met some people. And then there was one interesting person I met. And there's this guy, I was checking out this booth that was all about chocolate. And uh, there was a dealer there and it was kind of small-ish, but it turned out to be a chocolatier who was like from, Fr he was like, he, he lived in the States now, but his family was originally from France. And they were like four or five generations deep of chocolate makers. So, I mean, they really knew what they were doing and chocolate was really in the family. It was something that had been there forever. And I was just kind of poking around the booth and seeing what they might have new or interesting. And, you know, they were a high quality chocolate maker and that was about it. So the, uh, the, the owner, who I didn't know was the owner time, but one of the, one of the guys at the booth came up to me and said, oh, you know, it's candy critic. Oh, you, you were, you candy. That's cool. Um, you know, let me, let me talk to you about my products. So he started talking to me about his chocolate and everything like that. And apparently this, uh, this chocolatier was uh, known for making uh, chocolate for uh, fancy hotels and stuff like that. In particular, they were known for making chocolates, chocolate for those desserts and stuff that cost like thousands of dollars. Like if you have like a you know $2,000 um, chocolate sundae, they'll be the ones that make the chocolate for it. You know, I know there'll be gold and all kinds of other rare things, but they have this one type of milk chocolate that is extremely high quality. So it's made with the best ingredients, it's made in a really old way, it's made the traditional way that this family has been doing it for years. They, they did make regular sort of chocolate as well, but this particular chocolate was the, uh, the, the cream of the crop for them. So this guy, he, uh, he said to me, he said, you know, do you want to try the ultimate chocolate experience? And the number of times people have said, do you want to try the greatest chocolate this or the greatest candy this? It happens to me a lot, strangely enough. I can't tell you how many times people say, oh, I've got the best candy ever. And then when I try it, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's horrible. Um, it doesn't always work out. So when somebody tells me they want to give me the greatest chocolate experience I've ever had, I'm kind of skeptical because I've had some pretty good chocolate experiences. I've been to you know, uh, Belgium, I've been to France, I've been to Switzerland. So I've been to all kinds of places that are well known for their chocolates. And so, uh, you know, this, I, I, this guy told me, you know, to try it and I'm like, okay, sure. So what he did, this is, this is, this is how you do it. So take, write this down right now. If you want to have the ultimate chocolate experience, what you do is you take extremely high quality milk chocolate, 
not dark chocolate. You want milk chocolate. It has to be very, very, very high quality. I mean, if you can get get your favorite milk chocolate is a good way to start. Like in the realistic terms, if you're doing this at home, even if I was doing this at home, I don't have this expensive, hard to get chocolate. And generally the only way you can get this high-end chocolate this guy sells is if you buy it in bulk, you have to buy a big brick of it and shave it yourself. So get the milk chocolate you like, pure milk chocolate you like, it could be a chocolate bar, anything like that. Crumble it up into little bits or shave it or however you can make it sort of smaller amounts, sort of crumbly. Then what you do is you get cocoa beans that have been freshly toasted. At the time when I did this, cocoa beans weren't a regular thing in most stores. There were some stores, health food stores and stuff you could find cocoa at, but it wasn't that common. So he said, you know, he gave me this handful and the cocoa beans were still just a little bit warm and the um, chocolate was shaved. And he sort of gave me equal parts cocoa bean to this high, 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 super high quality milk chocolate. And he said, just pop that in your mouth and see what you think. So I popped it in my mouth and I've never felt anything like that before in my life. I've tasted chocolate before and I've tasted some good chocolate, but it's very rare that you feel a good chocolate. And what I mean by that is the uh, chocolate flavor doesn't just sit on your tongue, doesn't just sort of taste, touch your taste buds, but as it, you crunch through the, co the cocoa nibs and the, the, the chocolate, the, the, the flavor actually comes up into your nose and you sort of really smell it. And it almost feels like it's taking over your entire, your, your, your entire head is filled with this chocolate. And it almost makes you feel almost a little drowsy, but in a good way, sort of relaxed and calming. And the flavor just sort of takes over your mouth. And it was just, it was an unbelievable experience. And I, I paused for a minute. And I, I really enjoyed it. And I was like, he was right. It was the greatest chocolate experience I've ever had. It, again, I've, a couple of candy makers and, and, and sweet shop places have said, do you want to have the blankest, you know, greatest blank experience of your life? And none have really done that for me except for this one guy. And, uh, you know, I got to say it was, it was fantastic. And if you ever have the means to do it, by all, by all means, if you ever get one of those, you know, $2,000 Sundays, take some of those sprinkles. And if you can, can save the chocolate or if you can get some cocoa beans, you want to have this explosive experience. And it's very simple. I mean, the trick is the, the milk chocolate cuts into the cocoa beans, uh, but still adds an extra layer of chocolate. When it goes into your head with the melting chocolate and with the, the crunching of the fresh cocoa beans, because they're freshly toasted, the smell just takes over your entire head. It just, it's a pure chocolate bliss and it's unbelievably good. And I mean, that, that was easily the greatest chocolate experience I've ever had in my life. One of the greatest candy experiences I've ever had in my life. And so, I mean, it's, uh, it was fantastic. So, I mean, my favorite candy, according to Candy Critic, is the Kit Kat bar, highest rated. My favorite candy that I really want is something new, something creative, something I've never tried before. The greatest, one of the greatest chocolate experiences I've ever had in my life, fresh cocoa beans, extremely high quality milk chocolate, popped in your mouth after the milk chocolate's been shaved, melts in your mouth and just your head explodes with chocolatey goodness. So that's it. I mean, that's, that's the experience and that's another story. And thanks for watching another episode of Junk Food and You. Um, we're hopefully going to make more episodes. I've got some ideas brewing and some possible interviews with some friends, family, and maybe some, some other candy uh, people around that I, that I talk to. Um, as always, you can follow us on Twitter, at Candy Critic, or go to candycritic.org and find links to all of our other social media, including Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr. Um, you can also go to uh, patreon.com slash candycritic, and there you can uh, sign up with our Patreon page. Uh, we're doing a whole bunch of new projects, and some of them might include free stuff for you if you are a patron at a certain tier, but we also have a Friday video. You get previews to videos like this one, um, and uh, all kinds of stuff, interactions, fun stuff like that. Uh, but uh, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, make sure to uh, 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 like and comment and such. Uh, if you're following this on uh, SoundCloud or any other place you get your podcast, make sure to give us some uh, positive reviews and feedback. So thanks for uh, watching another episode, and we'll see you next time. Bye.